for the next remaining few moments I want to speak to you about the importance of divine healing. I'm going to title this message is Healing Explosion. Here at Hungry Generation this is a month where we're believing, praying for divine healing, for explosion of physical healings to take place in our church and through our church, in our home groups, through our live stream, through the trips that we take, through the music that is produced and just generally through the power evangelism and every means that we go about. Before I share with you the word from the Bible, I want to encourage you and to let you know that physical healing is something that we believe in and it doesn't cancel the medical science. Medicine treats, Jesus heals. Medicine treats, Jesus heals. We are not one of those churches that believes that revival has to empty out hospitals. I know people say sometimes, when we want to empty out hospitals. I don't want that because we have a lot of people in our church work in the hospital. They're going to lose their jobs. So we, we believe in medical science, we believe in doctors and, and, and nurses and we in fact praying for them. Can we just take a moment right now and just pray for anybody who works in the field of medicine. Let's just take a moment right now and pray for that. And so Diana, would you, would you come up and just lead that prayer? Yeah. If you are there and watching us right now, whether you're in your house and you're a nurse, you're working in whatever field in the medical world, we just want to pray for you right now. We just want to pray that God will bless you, use you because you're part of God's will on this earth. It is God's will to bring health to humanity and you're part of that will. If it's God's will to bring sickness to people, then every doctor is planning against God's will. Every nurse is working against God's will. If it's God's will to bring sickness, then hospitals are direct rebellion against God and Jesus tried to rebel against God's will by healing the sick. We believe it is God's will to bring health and therefore doctors and nurses and anybody working in medical field is fulfilling God's commission on this earth to bring health, healing and hope to this world. Let's just take a moment right now and let's just pray for anybody who's working in that field that God will give them grace and anointing in Jesus name. Amen. Father we come before you and we just want to bring up all of the doctors right now. We want to bring up all of the nurses, all the surgeons right now who are working right now in the medical field. We ask Father that through their hands there will be miracles, there will be healings that will occur for we know that they are here fulfilling your will. That you want people that are sick, that are uh, that have incurable diseases that through their hands, that when they lay hands on them, when they are um, during surgery Father that they will be healed Father. That the medicine will work Father God on the people that are struggling that you're sick father we know that your kingdom will be brought here on earth father and we ask and we bless every single nurse every single doctor anyone working in the middle medical field in Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said amen 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 see we must understand that God's initial goal for humanity wasn't healing it was health God didn't plan for healing healing came as a result of sin if you think about it because of sin, sickness came. God didn't plan for us to need deliverance. God created us with dominion. Deliverance came as a result of sin. And deliverance is a means to get her to our true calling, which is dominion. Healing is a means to get to our true plan of God for us, and that is divine health. God cares. In order to understand healing, we must understand God's perspective on the human body. God created the human body in his God created us in his image and in his likeness not only God created the human body but God heals the human body not only God heals the human body the Bible says Jesus purchased our body for himself the spirit indwells in our body God resurrects our body and God rewards us for what is done in the body come on somebody the body is very important. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why God cares for it so deeply. In the Bible the healing is mentioned 138 times. One-fifth of Jesus' ministry was healing the sick. Jesus was the healer on this earth. And I want to talk about today, it's going to be just like an introduction of how it's important and what we can do as a church to see atmosphere of healing in our church. If you have your Bible, you can just follow me along with Mark 
chapter 6 and I'm not going to read a lot I'm just gonna make a reference to one portion of Mark chapter 6 if you read Mark chapter 6 you see the beginning of the chapter Jesus is in Nazareth first verse until the sixth verse Jesus is in his hometown and people are offended at Jesus people are astonished at Jesus people marvel at Jesus people question Jesus there and at the end it says that is that he could do no mighty work there except he laid his hands on a few sick people somebody say few few meaning not not many just few sick people and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief because he went then he went about the villages in the circuit teaching and if you scroll down in your phone or if you have a physical bible look all the way to the end of mark chapter 6 i want you to see this in verse 53 is that jesus goes to the city of Gennesaret, the land of Gennesaret, and verse 54 it says the following and when they came out of the boat so jesus immediately people recognized him ran through all of the whole surrounding region began to carry about on beds those who were sick to whatever they heard he was whatever he entered into villages cities or the country they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment and as many somebody say as many as many as, many as touched him were made well so in one city we see he couldn't do mighty work few people got healed the same chapter the same Jesus goes to another land and the revival breaks out as many as wanted got healed we don't want to be Nazareth we want to be Gennesareth we don't want few we want an explosion and so I want to compare right now these two places and to share for us it's this message has been birthed from my prayer time in the last few months every Wednesday I pretty much pray through these points that I want to share with you because I believe that they hold a short and a small key for our church to see greater level of healings in our place number one I want you to notice this is in Nazareth Nazareth experienced few healings Gennesareth saw as many as touched Jesus were made well one place experienced few another one experienced an explosion and the Bible says about Nazareth is that Jesus could not do mighty works there. He wanted to work but he couldn't do much work there. And in the other city people just started to touch him and he was healed. I genuinely believe that in both cities Jesus was the same. Jesus wasn't tired in the other one. Jesus was in version 2. Jesus wasn't Jesus Jr. Jesus was the same in both places but people were not the same. Jesus is the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. Jesus is the same who wants to heal now, who wants to save now, who wants to forgive now, who wants to restore now, who wants to raise now, who wants to change now. Jesus is the same. The problem is that people change in different places. And I want to share something with you. For the healing explosion to happen, we must understand this healing explosion is the work of Jesus the absence of that explosion is our work meaning when God heals people it's because God is doing his best when healings don't happen it's not because God is not working it's because we're working too hard to hinder it the only thing that Nazareth had to do is to stay out of Jesus' way we have to work hard and not staying in Jesus' way. We don't make God the healer. We don't make God the savior. Our faith doesn't make God good. God is good already. What our faith does is it lets God be who he is and it doesn't hinder him because we stay out of his way. I believe greater healings is not because of it's our work. We work hard and that's why we pray fast and give but it's not really so that we work hard. It's so that we stay out of His way so He can work hard. Healing is when God works hard, not me or not you. 
and for that to happen we must understand that where healings don't happen it's not because God doesn't want to work a lot of times we I'm not talking about the sick people I'm talking about we in general as a community we can be hindering that by working very hard that that doesn't happen number two thing I want you to notice between Nazareth and Gennesaret in Nazareth Nazareth was offended at Jesus Gennesaret recognized Jesus Nazareth was offended at Jesus few healings Gennesaret recognized Jesus as many as touched were healed in Nazareth there was unbelief but what touched me Joe and you watching me there is the fact even in unbelief and in offense people still got healed I believe there's no excuse for no healings to happen at all even if people don't have faith at all even there people still got healed what happened in Nazareth today we call it revival if you people get healed if a little bit of sparkle of God's grace comes in it will be on a cover of charisma magazine Christianity today revival is happening few people got healed but in here Jesus was disappointed with few because he had so much more because his work was limited and so I want to tell you something that and the reason for that was this is the Bible says Nazareth was offended at Jesus what was the source of their offense their history with Jesus they had a history with Jesus that did not reflect who Jesus claimed to be now listen very carefully offense begins when your experiences with God don't match what God says about himself in his word the same thing happens to us today too people grew up with Jesus played ball with him ran up the mountains went to school swimmed they did everything together he never once healed the sick he never once raised the dead he never once cast out demons and they knew him like this for 30 years and this is Jesus now in three years he's somebody he's healing the sick he's walking on water he's raising the dead and so when he comes to that community they say we know you you don't do that stuff that's not you we got you figured out for 30 years we have 30 year experience with you and that experience became a stumbling block to see Jesus for who he was see the devil will always use your experiences with God before that don't reflect his true nature as a stumbling block for you to not give God an opportunity to be, to be who he is right now in your life sometimes our failed prayers we have experience where we prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed maybe you're watching right now and you've been praying and there's a still sickness in your body and you've been praying for 30 years maybe 12 years 10 years and that experience the devil will use that experience against you to block your view of Jesus so you see Jesus through your experiences with Jesus instead of through the Word of God the places where explosions happen are not the places where people never been disappointed they refuse to let their disappointment become the basis of their doctrine they never let the failure blur their faith people who see explosion of healings they recognize Jesus they see Jesus for who Jesus is not through the filter of an answered prayer somebody who did not get healed somebody who died and they prayed for them they don't let that come between them and who Jesus is somebody give God praise right now <laughs> hallelujah what am I saying I'm not saying that we should ignore what we've experienced before I'm saying is that we should never let what we've experienced with God our experience in prayer our experience with the topic of healing our experience with the topic of health to become the filter the paradigm the glasses through which we see God today if God failed your expectations trust him to exceed them if you feel like what you got is not fair aim for favor don't let what you're going through right now to come in between who God is you may say but I, 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 I know God 
I've been burned by this. The same way Nazareth said about Jesus. They looked at Jesus and they said, Jesus, we know you. Jesus said, I am God. They said, but we know you as a friend, as a colleague. And they were offended at Jesus. You know, the story that comes to my mind about somebody who was offended, who had a chance to be offended, it was, it was Job. Job was living righteous and things were going well for Job. And then one day, everything falls apart. One day the Bible says that his children, they die pretty much very close to the day where all of them, they die. All of his possessions are gone. Job's health begins to deteriorate. His wife comes to him and says, Job, curse God and die. And, she's, and he says, what do you mean curse God and die? Her idea was that your God failed you and now your experience with God has been negative and therefore you need to define God by your experience and you need to get rid of him and take your life and Job realized if I curse God and die I'll bless God and I'll live and he says you speak as one of the foolish ones and Job comes he rips his clothes in grief and in pain he doesn't ignore his disappointment he doesn't ignore his hurt and his pain and the Bible says when he rips his clothes in grief he gets down and he begins to worship and then there's this phrase it says and he charged God with no wrong meaning he looked at God and said God I don't understand this I got questions I have doubts but you're not guilty that's not your fault God what happened to me ain't your fault God I'm not putting you in prison on my failed expectations God I'm not tying you up and saying God you owe this to me and you owe that God I worship you the why will wait but the worship has to come first and when he worshiped after that he started to ask his why. he started to say well Lord why and why and why and why but first came worship but what I love about Job was this is if you read Job in fact would you be kind to open Job with me the last chapter 40 chapter 42 chapter 42 and verse 2 I want you to open it I want you to see something that changed my perspective on the story of Job when it comes to healing chapter 42 verse 2 I know you can do everything and no purpose of yours can be withheld from you you asked who is this who hides counsel without knowledge therefore I have uttered I want you to watch this therefore I have uttered what I did not understand things too wonderful for me which I do not know listen please let me speak you said I will question you and you will answer me I have heard of you by the hearing of ear now my eyes my eye sees you therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes Job's still sick Job's family is gone but when he has an encounter with God and he now not hears God he sees him face to face he said God I am so sorry I don't know what I was saying please forgive me I'm embarrassed Job what is your questions now see when you have an encounter with God your questions always take the back seat. Never once we see in here that God actually answered his questions. What, what God did is God revealed his face. God showed himself and when Job saw God, he says, God I'm so sorry. I, 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 I don't have any more questions. I'm just, I just want to let you know, I only heard about you from other people. Now I see you and I, I, everything's fine. And that's when healing came. We need to recognize God like Nazareth they were offended at the history they had with Jesus but the Nazareth they recognized God see for us to recognize who Jesus is that means that he loves people that he loves the sick and he wants to heal we have to stop allowing our experiences with healing to define who God is God is who Jesus was God is who Jesus was you want to know if God wants to heal you you don't look at the fact that the last person you prayed for didn't get healed. You look at the fact that Jesus healed the sick. That's God's will for you. God is 
who Jesus was. God is not what happened to my uncle three years ago. God is not what happened to my mom. God is not what's happening with my back. God is not what's happening with my throat. God is who Jesus was and that's fixed and that's settled. Come on somebody. My failed prayer doesn't change God. I am not to define God. I'm to discover Him. I'm to discover He doesn't change. When a blind man screamed on the street, Jesus stopped for him. When lepers who were cast by society asked to touch Him, asked for Him to heal them, Jesus healed them. When the roof of the building was broken through and it interrupted the dust and the insulation started to fall up and interrupted the building. I can imagine the insurance costs. Jesus did not get mad. He healed a man who was quadriplegic. When the woman whose daughter most likely was tied to a bed because she was demon possessed, she interrupted Jesus and she didn't qualify for that. Jesus touched her. When Jesus was eating in a group of men and another woman had sin in her life, and everybody knew her as a prostitute and she started to touch Jesus's feet. Jesus lost his reputation but he, she, he always touched that woman. You want to know who God is? You look at Jesus. I want to tell you something right now that God loves people. Jesus loves the sick. He didn't create your pain. He loves you. He cares for you. Maybe you're carrying a disease that's been you've been battling with for a very long time. And maybe you're asking God, why did you allow this God? I want you to please understand. For you to see healing in your life and for us to see healing in our church, we really have to stop blaming God for the disease in the world. He didn't create it and He didn't bring it. It's not His fault. And we really have to unprison God, meaning give Him the freedom to be who He is and not to let offenses be built in our heart because of what God has not done. Maybe you have not seen the activity of God for 30 years of your life and Jesus shows up right now. Don't let the 30 years stand before you because Jesus reveals Himself in the new light. Let's not be Nazareth. Let's be Gennesareth. Let's not let light def life define God. Let's discover God afresh at the feet of the Bible. Jesus heals and He heals today. I don't know why certain people don't get healed. I don't have an explanation. I'm not going to blame it on God. I'm not going to blame it on those sick people. What I'm going to understand is that God still loves people. God is still good and I will not let that define or redefine God for me. I'm going to rediscover God when I see Jesus. I see God's love. I see God's mercy. I see God's grace. Come on somebody. You're not given the right to define God. We're only given the privilege to discover Him. How we perceive God will affect what we will receive from Him. Healing explosion will happen when I don't change God based on what I've experienced from Him before. Nazareth experienced a little bit of miracles. Nazareth experienced explosion. Nazareth was offended at Jesus because of their history. And Nazareth recognized Jesus in a new fresh light. Anytime we worship, we see Jesus for who He is. We really need to take filters, experiences, failures and our failed disappointments that we have had with the Lord. We need to put them aside. I'm not saying to ignore them. I'm saying we put them aside and we say, Jesus, I want to see you for who you are. The sickness in this world is not your fault. Blaming God for the sickness is the same, it's unreasonable. It's kind of like blaming Secretary of Transportation for the accident on the Highway 395. It's not his fault. It's not God's fault that your mom died. You know whose fault it is? It's Satan's fault. It's sin's fault. It's our fault. God sent his son to die for us. He sent his spirit to live in us and he sent his authority to heal the sick. He's done everything on his end and to blame him is, is not right. And the devil wants us to do that. What, what it does is it limits what we can receive from God and it limits God's power in our life. You can't trust God, the one that you're offended in. I'm not saying that doubt is bad. Doubt is good. 
especially when you don't understand things doubt is doubt says I'm looking for the light unbelief says I'm content in darkness doubt is very honest unbelief is very stubborn doubt says I'm having a hard time to believe give me some evidence unbelief says I won't believe in spite of evidence don't let your disappointment lead you to doubt and to lead you to unbelief in your disappointment run to God like Job you have a lot of questions run to God have God reveal his face to you and when he does you begin to see him in a new light and when you recognize him out of him flows the healing out of him flows the anointing out of him flows the change and even if God doesn't heal or things don't happen you don't get healed we have to understand maybe medicine through medicine you will be healed and if something happens and not through medicine and not through prayer you get healed when you die your sickness is over the very second you're dead your sickness is done with either way you're not going to live with that sickness forever that disease is not your portion and in a second that your eyes open in eternity there is no more arthritis there is no more tumors there is no more sickness in your body and that's what we focus on he'll make it all right amen number three I want you to notice about Nazareth and Gennesaret is that Nazareth in Nazareth people brought arguments to Jesus in Gennesaret they brought the sick watch this in Nazareth the only thing people were concerned is to argue with Jesus in Gennesaret the people were not arguing they brought the sick in fact when they saw on Jesus' Facebook that Jesus has an event coming up in Gennesaret Gennesaret all the people started to organize a committee it wasn't a debate club you know what they organized they said make sure we get to every hospital and every sick person we know and we tell them Jesus is coming you better leave the sick house and you better come on that street because he's coming we got to get ready why because Jesus is coming we got to get the sick ready and the Lord started to speak to my heart and I want to speak to our church right now is that if we want to see a healing explosion we have to see the sick people you know who brought the sick the healthy people you know who brought those sick people to Jesus the healthy people in the Nazareth the healthy people did not see the sick people among them they only saw arguments and they only saw debates with Jesus they were concerned for the accuracy of which he or not in the Gennesaret they said it's good but the sick people is the problem with offense is this is the offense blurs your vision of God and offense always makes you not see the other people offended people God didn't answer my prayer somebody didn't get healed that I prayed for and ever since then I don't I don't pray for the sick I don't believe in that stuff see not only it already messed up your view of God but after that you no longer care for other sick people because your hurt is the center of your universe your pain becomes the central focus of your life you are becoming self-conscious self-absorbing and self-pity kicks in I believe one of the reasons why healings don't happen is not because the sick people don't have faith it's because the healthy people don't care <laughs> let's say it again it's not because the sick people don't have faith healings did not happen in Nazareth because sick people did not have faith it's because the healthy people chose to debate with Jesus instead of bringing the sick people I repent of that Lord I don't want to be a pastor whose only concern is to debate and philosophy. I want to, when I preach my sermons, when I pray my prayers, I want to think of that mother who has six months to live. I want to think of that father who cannot get up and get down without pain. I want to think of that family who just had their child in a mental institution. I want to think of that person who, who has to inject himself with things because he has arthritis or because they have diabetes. I want to think, see the problem with healthy people in Nazareth is they only concern themselves with the debate. And in Gennesaret people concern themselves with sick people. They were not even sure whether Jesus is the Messiah or not. But they said we got sick people and we know Jesus heals. I want us as church if you are healthy preoccupy yourself with those who are sick by praying for them caring for them and doing whatever they can because a healing explosion doesn't depend on their faith it depends on our care and our compassion come on somebody 
care and our compassion. Healing explosion doesn't depend always on their faith but it depends on my compassion. Offended people cannot see beyond themselves. That's why offense is dangerous because you only see you. You know we just read about Job. When Job recognized God, when Job saw God, you know what God told Job to do after that? Is to pray for his friends. When you have a revelation of who God is and you don't let the offense get in the way, after that God will challenge you to care for others even when you're still hurting. Job prayed for his friends when he himself was still struggling. Abraham prayed for the women who were barren when he himself had a wife that was barren. Jesus himself was healing the sick when they were locking him up. Jesus led another criminal on the cross to salvation while he was bleeding. Joseph translated the dreams of men in the hospital when his own dream from God was postponed. See when you let go, let go of the offense and you see that God is bigger than your experience with Him, the second thing that will begin to happen is God will let you see the hurting people who are hurting more than you and you will begin to care for them and you will begin to minister to them and that is how healing flows. It doesn't flow from us, it flows through us and that can only happen when the valve of our heart is open and it only can happen when the offense is gone. When the offense is gone. I want you to see we're coming to an end. Leaders in Nazareth they questioned Jesus and the leaders of Gennesareth begged Jesus. In one city debate, in another a lot of begging. Jesus please. We have this lady in the hospital she's been, she says, you gotta understand she, she hadn't been able to hold her grandchildren for all her life. Can you touch her? I know you're busy. Could you just pass by so she touches you? In Nazareth, people are dying of cancer and the only thing leaders are concerned is how could Jesus preach such a clever messages and never be able to go to college the, the way that other rabbis went. They don't beg, they debate. I believe when we see who Jesus is. He's a healer and He loves people. And we see the sick people. It leads us to another step. We begin to beg Jesus in private to release His grace and anointing that when we pray for the sick in public, we see the manifestation of that. We beg. We cry out. Some of you may say, well Vlad, we don't need to beg. Jesus already paid on the cross. Jesus already has done everything. We, we don't beg because it's not done. We beg because it is done. We pray because it is done. We pray not out of, we don't pray for, we pray out of that victory. When we just had a sacrifice a few Sundays ago, you know, and, and pastor called me the next day. He said, Vlad, when I found out how much people gave, when I found out how radically people sacrificed, he says, I woke up four o'clock in the morning and I started to say, God, all these prayer requests they have, God, you got to answer them. <laughs> that day I had a word in my heart from Elijah's story. When Elijah offered the sacrifice and the fire came on a sacrifice. The priests of Baal were killed but God said if you show yourself to the king Ahab I'll bring the rain. Elijah shows himself, brings the fire and sacrifice but there is no rain. But the promise of God said there'll be rain. Elijah doesn't just go home and say well God said it, it settles it. Elijah climbs up the mountain and seven times he begins to pray say God you said it. The sacrifice was offered, fire fell on sacrifice but God we need the rain. See and that's exactly why we're praying and fasting. It's because we know that Jesus is the healer. We know the promise has been given. We laid the sacrifice and we have to do our part of begging. We're not, we don't have time to just debate with the Lord, argue with the Lord. We say God we're begging for your grace. No not for ourselves. Not only for our families. We're begging for our city. We're begging for our world. We're begging for our place of influence. We say Jesus send the rain. You already send the fire, send the rain. Lord, we brought the sacrifice, send the rain. Send the rain of healing, Lord. Heal the sick. That's why you saw sometimes praying for the cancers and maybe some of you look at us like, why are they doing that? God already finished it. Everything's already done. Well, if it's finished, then why is those healings don't happen in your life? And blaming it on the sick people, that's a coward thing to do. 
blaming it oh it's because sick people don't have faith really when every person that got healed had great faith not so and some of the people that died I know had the greatest faith that I've ever seen in my life I believe that in order for us to see greater manifestation of healing we have to recognize who Jesus is we have to have compassion for the sick and we gotta beg Jesus like crazy in private Jesus move mightily while we pray for the sick healing explosion does not always depend on the faith of the sick as much on the warfare of the healthy let me say that again healings don't always depend on the faith of the sick but on the warfare of the healthy when was the last time you interceded for the sick you know every month we take time to fast and sometimes you know I'm thinking I'm like man I'm healthy but you know why I fast one of the reasons I fast is for those who are not healthy God given me the assignment God gave our church the assignment the reason my heart is bleeding for the healing of the sick is not so we can do some kind of a healing ministry or show off all healings happen here it's because I know that there's there's a mantle that is laying on me and on every person to create an atmosphere through our prayer intercession fasting and sacrifice for the anointing to flow through us we can hinder because we're healthy or we can open the door because we're healthy and the healthy man of Gennesaret they came to Jesus and said Jesus come on and the healthy people of Nazareth came to Jesus said Jesus why is that why is that and they never saw the sick people and they blocked Jesus to reach the sick people behind them we want to be like the men of Gennesareth we said Jesus we beg you please you know this lady she's coming to our church to sick Jesus you know his parents their parents Jesus you know this person Jesus come on we beg you please Lord have your mercy and then when we get up in private to pray we don't beg we command we heal the sick we speak the word of God in boldness we're like Elijah tells Ahab get on your chariot why because the rain is coming and it's gonna get bad we get bold in public but we beg in private and the last thing in Nazareth Jesus touched the sick in Gennesareth the sick touched him in Nazareth as many as he touched which was few in Gennesareth he just walked and people grabbed it from him it's like a wi-fi without passport anybody can connect <laughs> it, it was no permission needed the man of that city came to Jesus says Jesus can we have the permission to touch you and you can imagine sick people don't touch gently they grab it I can only imagine his rope was probably ripped he's probably had bruises because the the people with paralysis would grab him another and Jesus never once you see rebuked he let as many as touch he didn't touch them they touched him that means in the other city the men of the city prepared the atmosphere they prepared the people and said Jesus passing by you grab anything because that's your healing passing by I want to create a church in hungry generation where we see Jesus as the healer even when we don't see healings I want to see create church in hungry generation where the sick people are not put down because of lack of their faith but always encouraged and we said if you don't have faith I'm gonna partner with you we're gonna get you healed we're gonna get you to Jesus we see you we know you we know you're hurting you know I liked when when Bob mentioned last Sunday you know he brought his wife Helen on the wheelchair every Sunday you know she passed away and she died she didn't receive that physical healing that she was contending for and you may say how do you explain that I don't God didn't even explain to Job what happened to him why do you expect me to have an explanation if God doesn't give an explanation what do I do I step over it I don't trip over what did not happen I know that she's doing perfectly fine right now in heaven and she's not complaining about it but what touches me is the fact that every Sunday a group of people in our church didn't try to push her out of wheelchair or try to come on they came and they surrounded her with love and I did not see a Sunday where that lady in the wheelchair wasn't prayed for and Bob said you know they went to many churches and people are afraid oh I don't want to pray what if she doesn't want to be healed in our church we, we don't 
think those weird thoughts we approach the sick and if they don't get healed they get loved on and she got loved on and she says I love that church hunger generation I never want us to stop being a place where we don't see the sick people we don't heal sick people Jesus does through us but if they don't get healed they need to be at least loved on through us and we have to be a place where in private we beg for his mercy to increase in public and lastly is that we create an atmosphere where even right now for the next few moments the Holy Spirit will enter your room and he will bring healing meaning we create opportunities in our service where the sick can be healed by praying for them laying hands on them doing deliverance visiting them and standing in faith with them wherever you're sitting I want you to right now welcome the Holy Spirit who brings healing for those of you in here let's just rise to our feet and we're going to pray for those who are sick right now we're going to minister the Word of God I want us first of all to just say Lord increase your grace right now in our life increase your grace in our church increase your grace in my life I want to be Gennesareth I don't want to be Nazareth I don't want to live in the fence I want to give you the opportunity to move I want to focus on who you are I don't want to let my life define who you are I want you Jesus to define who you are reveal yourself to me I put my disappointments aside I put my offenses aside Jesus give me compassion for the sick give me a burden for those who are lost and hurting and I create atmosphere in my heart, atmosphere of faith, atmosphere of trust. If you can there, close your eyes or just stretch your hands like this, especially if you're driving, don't close your eyes. But just remain in the Spirit right now. Just welcome the Holy Spirit. And as, as they're going to sing, let's open your heart up to the Lord right now. And His anointing will flow. And we will pray for the sick in just one moment. In Jesus' name. You deserve the glory. Thank you that even as people are watching right now the comfort of their homes or re-watching this service or listening to this podcast that your anointing is in that room and your presence is in this room in Jesus mighty name I rebuke every spirit of disease right now I rebuke that spirit of infirmity in Jesus mighty name every spirit behind that sickness I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ every repeated cycle of that sickness that's been passed from one generation to another in the name of Jesus I command it right now to lose its grip over that person to lose their joints 
to loose their organs right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command right now that growth, that cyst, that tumor to disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. That arthritis, I break its grip right now over your joints in Jesus mighty name. Those spasms in your muscles, in your spine, every injury, work related, accident related, it has to do with your back. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. That Holy Spirit's fire come and descend and touch your back in the name of Jesus Christ. Every injury in shoulders, every injury in the neck, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Every migraine headache in here and on the back, I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke that gastritis. I rebuke every allergy in the name of Jesus or every inability to eat certain foods. I rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke ear infection right now. Every problem with hearing, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, as we stretch our hands together with people who are agreeing right now, Lord, let your mercy and favor speak for them. Let your mercy and favor speak for them. For those of you watching, receive your healing right now. Whatever you could not do without pain, as you feel the fire of the Holy Spirit touch you, begin to move that part of your body by faith. And as you do so, you're thanking God that He is touching you. Begin to release that pain to the Lord and begin to receive your healing. Today is your day of healing. For those of you who got injured at this snow, Jesus is healing you right now. Just receive that in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord. You're making our church a place of healing. An atmosphere of healing is moving through Facebook and through YouTube, through podcast. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. We want to thank every single person for watching us and being part of this telecast. And we came to a time where we want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, to know your Father, to know your Creator, to know your Maker. Maybe you've been uh, been a Christian before, but you backslidden and you lost that relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to give you the opportunity to reconnect with Him. We have to understand that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Jesus, Jesus Christ loves you so much. He died for you. He accepts you the way that you are. Maybe you're just tuning in and it's your first time coming across Hungry Gen and you want to know this Jesus, this healer, this savior, this redeemer. I want to give you that opportunity right now. If that's you, just comment below right now that you want to receive Jesus Christ and pray this prayer with us. Or maybe you can send us a message or give us a call and that we want to know that you've given your life to Jesus Christ. And if that's you, pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Wash me with your precious blood. Forgive me of my sin. Accept me the way I am. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I want to know you. I want to live for you. And I want to walk with you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus right now. If you made that decision to follow Christ, we want to know about it. Let us know. Send us a message. Leave a comment below. We want to connect with you. You're part of our Hungry Gen family and we want to celebrate with you because heaven is throwing a party right now in Jesus' mighty name. So we want to thank you for being part of this telecast at Hungry Gen. We want to like to say better is not good enough. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.